Hey everybody, it's Jamie. We're going to start on part 8 uh, of the series and in this one we're going to start working with some tiles. So the first thing that we're going to need to do to get started is actually create an asset for um, for our tiles to use. So I'm going to create a new variable. So I'm just going to say player asset here and then I'm just going to come down here and say tile asset <clears throat> and then we'll create a new asset so var and I'm just going to say just say player instead of uh, calling it an asset there so we're going to change this just to player for now and then under here we'll set var tiles equal to new oh make sure we put equal going to be set to a new asset and we'll call it tiles and it is going to be uh, resources slash textures slash tiles dot png and we'll set it to 30 by 30 all right and that just means that the pictures on here are 30 by 30 and under here we're going to create some tiles so we're going to set dirt equal to tiles.sheet.crop and this will be the position for uh, for each tile so this one we're setting just what the position is currently on uh, in mine so we're using the height to get the basically this is the height of each um, tile in my image that I'm using. So if I go to if I go to my folder and we take a look, basically this is just a tile sheet I grabbed. These are 30 pixels by 30 pixels. And that's why I set the, uh, when creating the asset, I'm setting this to 30 by 30. That's the size of the tiles um, in the asset. And then when I say, when I use the height, basically I can get to a specific part of the picture. So in this case, times 10, that means that if it was zero, it would be this one times one, would get us to this one times two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're creating tiles um, by uh, we're cr cropping it out based on the the height multiplied by um, you know which which one we want to get to. So in this case, right here, the uh, the eleventh one down because we start at zero. So if I go back, so this one is a height um, for the so we're we're going to be the furthest column over which is zero and then the height of 10 gets us our first tile uh, and then we'll set the size of this um, we'll set its size to the default oops tiles dot width and tiles dot height so that's the the passed in size so now we can take this and duplicate it down and do uh, grass and I'll do stone the only difference is right here on mine we, we will just be getting the second tile down or the second row down and then the seventh so um, if you're going to my get the repository you can grab these textures there uh, and 
use the exact ones I'm using so that you can follow along directly with the code. So this way now we have now we have assets that we can grab. Um, so we can say you know get the get asset dot dirt and dot grass and dot stone. All right, so now that we've got the assets down, we can start with our tile class. So we can come up to our class folder, create a new directory called tiles. And in tiles, we can create a new file, new JavaScript file called tile tile and we can define it define pass in class and we will pass in assets and we will return those and inside of here we'll have some some uh, variables. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create some private variables. Um, really they'll be static, uh, public static variables as well, but the way that uh, we have to do this in JavaScript so that we can access them, as, uh, access them uh, the same way in Java, you know, it's a little bit different. So, so first I'm going to create the default tile width and tile height, uh, setting them equal to 32 and 32. Then we will create a private variable called tiles. Um, and all of these will be set to static variables that we can refer to as well in the future. Uh, so now we can start our class. So we'll say tile is equal to class dot extend. All right, and we will throw the constructor, passing in a texture and an ID. So there's a lot that I'm going to have to explain, especially if you haven't followed along with the Java version, which he explains all of this in it as well in Code and More's version. Um, but we will we will go over what we uh, all of this stuff once we've got it typed out. So we'll set this dot texture equal to the texture passed in, and this dot ID is equal to underscore ID. And what we're also going to do is set tiles at the position of ID equal to this. So we're actually setting it equal to the instance that was created. And you'll see how this all comes together beautifully uh, after we're done. So I'm going to create the, the public static version of uh, some of these things. So we'll create tiles.tiles or tile.tiles, um, and that will be set to that array that we are pushing our um, IDs into or our instances into. Um, and remember, this is private. That means that regardless of the instance, this thing right here is the same, will be uh, referable um, no matter what instance. It, it, it is a, a private variable, so it's something that isn't per instance it's something that's you know for the whole class um, globally so tile dot tiles makes it static so we can refer to it in any class that imports the tile um, the tile class same thing can be done with tile dot tile width set that equal to tile width and tile dot tile height is equal to tile height so we're setting those equal to the variables up here. Tile width, tile height. Okay. Do, do, do. And next thing I will do is add some functions into our construct our uh, 
extend object. So we will say uh, we'll also have a tick function passing in delta time. Actually, we aren't passing anything in right now. Um, we can just default it to delta time, though nothing is being done in our tick function. We can actually compress it here. We will have a render passing in the graphics object. And we'll also have a few getters, so we'll say get ID is equal to function, where we return this dot ID. We will also have um, a function called is solid. And by default, this function will return return false. So we're going to assume um, that our our default um, value or, or behavior of a tile is that it's not a solid tile and you can pass through it or over it. Um, and then lastly we will also say that the tile dot oops tile dot assets is going to be equal to assets dot get assets tiles. So we're going to set the default asset or a static variable called assets that we can access um, from any class that imports this one. We'll set it equal to the asset of tiles. So you'll see that we can refer to that when we're creating our individual tiles. Also, we need to now return tile down here. And uh, I'm not sure what's going on with... Uh, this file, I believe everything's fine in it. I could be overlooking something pretty simple, uh, but I'm getting tons of errors in WebStorm, but not sure exactly what it is. The, the file looks fine to me at a glance. Um, the next thing that we can do, we can save this. And um, oh, one thing I do want to say, we want to take in an actual X and a Y into our render function and uh, what we'll do is we'll do a g dot my draw or underscore g dot my draw image and we're going to pass in this dot texture we're going to pass in the x the y and then the tile width and tile height <clears throat> And you'll see how this works uh, later on and how it makes it uh, more dynamic uh, and, and it'll make things run a lot better. So next thing that we'll do. So there's one thing that we're going to have to do oops, that code more does not have to do. And we're going to create a new class and we're going to call this one tile loader. And its job is going to be really easy. We are just going to define. We're going to take in a class. And we will take in tile. And we'll take in a lot of other things. But for now, we'll just take in this function class. Oh, and actually, we don't need class here. We don't actually refer to class. So we'll just do tile. And all this is going to be for is uh, adding or loading in a tile and creating the actual class instance. So I'm going to create one tile and then. Uh, and then I'll explain why we need to do it this way. So we'll create a grass tile. And we will say define tile. And we'll take in assets as well. Actually, I don't think we need to take in assets. We, we don't need to take in assets. We will then function tile
So with this, we are going to create uh, a grass tile and set it equal to a new tile dot extend. Oops. And in its constructor, it's going to take in an ID. So we'll say this dot underscore super. So we're going to call the constructor of the tile class. We're going to pass in uh, that assets dot grass. So remember, we set the a static um, property. Let me fix this up a bit. Grass tile extend, we're closing it here. We didn't open it here. Okay. Um, so we are we are passing in the asset in the tile class. We have that static variable asset, which are assets, which um, if we oops, I shut it. If we open it up right here, assets is set to um, all the assets for tiles and then remember in our actual asset um, declaration here we create all these sub um, properties so like all these things like grass dirt and stone that we can refer to in our um, in our tile class so or in the asset class so now we will also pass in the ID that was given and that's literally all that needs to be done for an instance. So return dirt or grass tile. So now we have a grass tile. We have it defined. Um, and it's going to pass to the constructor the grass asset and an ID. And um, now what we can do is if we go into the tile loader, we will also load in grass tile here and pass in grass tile so we have access to it so now I can say tile which we have access to we can give create a static uh, variable within it now and call it grass grass tile so tile dot grass tile and set it equal to new grass tile. Now what we're also going to do is pass in an ID so that a grass tile has an ID of zero. Um, and then we can return tile. So let me explain why we have to do this. With with uh, require.js what it does is if you have a, uh, a class that you require it actually loads that class up first before running your code so that class has to be loaded before you can run the code and if you look at a grass tile a grass tile loads in tile and tile has to be loaded and ready to use before we can go any further so what that means is unlike code more where code more just comes in here and sets the um, he comes into the tile class and he sets the static property set to a new um, a new grass tile right here. He sets the just like basically like we did here. He he could just say it like grass tile is equal to a new grass tile. Um, he can do it in here, but we can't because we actually um, we would need to include the grass tile up here. And when we include grass tile up into uh, this module that makes it load grass tile first right well if we load this first it needs the tile class to be loaded first which the tile class like we said wouldn't be able to be loaded without loading the grass tile. so it'd be this loop of them not being able to load up correctly so this is just a little middle go between that actually sets our um, static property there so now we can load uh, as long as we load the uh, the tile loader up into our uh, into our game class. We're good, you know. We can load tile and game and all that uh, grass tiles and all that stuff all up, and there won't be any weird conflicting things. So I'm going to go ahead and 
do tile dot uh, dirt tile. Let's go to new dirt tile. Now I haven't set these up yet, but we will. And tile dot stone tile. And I did call it stone. Yep. All right. Tile over tile dot stone tile is equal to a new stone tile. That's two. So we've got these set up and ready to go. We just need to create the classes. So we'll copy this. And I will come to tile and create a new class called stone tile. And I'll paste this in. Now the only difference that we're going to do here is in the uh, in the object that we pass in, we're going to override our is solid function. So we'll say is solid is equal to function, and it's going to return true. So we're overriding the default one. So if we go to tile, you can see that is solid is actually set to false by default. So a stone tile will return true and let us know that, hey, we shouldn't be able to pass through a stone tile, um, you know, because it's a solid tile. But really, besides coming here and changing this to stone, there's nothing different about this class than the other classes, or the other, the grass class. So stone and stone tile. And the same can be done with our other tile. And this one would be dirt tile. Come down here. And a dirt tile we'll be able to step on, so we don't that won't matter. We will refer to dirt here. And dirt dirt. So now we've got three tiles, two of which we can step over and one of which we cannot. We are coming into our tile loader and we are able to create a grass tile and by just coming in here and saying uh, dirt tile and stone tile and passing them along. Dirt tile stone tile now we have access to them and we're able to create them now we also always when creating a new class have to go into our app.js file and add our um, tile so first we'll add tile which comes to tile and that's in app slash classes slash tile slash tile we need our tile loader as well, tile loader. And that's app slash classes slash tiles slash tile tile loader. And then we have a dirt tile. Dirt tile. Oops. And that is in app slash classes slash tile slash dirt tile. Um, the next one we had was grass. Grass tile. And that is app slash classes slash tile slash grass tile. And then we have our stone tile app slash classes slash tile slash stone tile all right now we can refer to them correctly um, oops comma here all right now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, grab tile loader and this is going to be a bit different 
So Tile Loader actually returns tile. Um, so we're going to call what we're grabbing tile. So though we're loading in Tile Loader here, what we're getting is the tile class with the, um, you know, just with these uh, static properties that we've added. So that's the only use for Tile Loader. We're actually grabbing tiles, uh, or the tile class from this module or um, yeah module so go back to our game state here and so now we will refer to it as tile so one thing that we can do is we could come into the render and if you remember our tile class has the render function taking in a graphics brush an X and a Y so what we should be able to do is come here and say a tile dot and then we can put tiles zero like so um, and this will be the ID of our grass tile I believe and then we'll say render passing in G and then we'll say let's say zero comma zero all right, let's see what we get here, what kind of errors we have, because I've been dying to see what these errors that it keeps uh, giving me are. So I will come to our tile game. We will bring up the console and hit refresh. Okay. So AST is not defined in our assets. So go back to assets. And where else do we refer to AST? Right here. We'll say player. Like so. So now save that. See what else we got going on. Uh, tile loader is obviously not app slash class so I must have forgot the ES in class is so we will say classes and proceed extend of undefined and this is in all of these classes so if we come to tiles, we're returning tile. We come to our stone tile, tile, tile. All right, so tile is not being defined. Let's make sure in our app.js we refer to tile. And there must be some problem in here, uh, an equal sign. Where did I put an equals where I wasn't supposed to? Oh goodness. Tell me it isn't so. Yes, it is so. We'll copy this. What did I H E I G H T? I'm spelling things wrong. There we go. Now let's see what we got going on. ID is not defined, tile line 29. Man, I sure made tons of errors. Underscore ID. This, oh, right, underscore ID. That is defined. And there we go. Look at that, all that error stuff, and we finally get it going. So we have our first tile set. So you'll see how this helps out in the future quite a bit. Um, so essentially what we've did is we have a private array that's going to store all of the ID uh, or single instance of each tile that we create in the tile loader class. And again, we only create it in the tile loader class instead of just making the static property uh, right here because the way require loads stuff in and the fact that things need to be loaded up and ready to use 
before we can actually um, continue. And unfortunately, it would create an endless loop trying to load in a to uh, an asset that, or trying to load a class in that requires the class that you're trying to load uh, that class into. So it's just a real endless loop. So we have to create that tile loader class as a go between, just setting these properties, these static properties that we can reference outside of the class. Um, so once we create a new tile, it's going to um, create an instance that's added in here and then if we refer to this array in whatever ID we're actually going to be returning this instance so this instance has properties set such as its texture um, right here and an ID that we can return with the get ID function and these will come in handy as well as an is solid function and these are all things that are are set within here uh, the class so we get one we're creating one instance but we get to reuse it over and over because of the way that our root class um, render function works we can actually refer to the single instance and it's going to draw the texture that was created for it and then we actually put what position we're going to uh, what position we're going to set it at on the screen so when I say when I create two or three tiles of the same ID or the same type of tile we're actually using one instance to draw it multiple times which saves a lot um, and makes it run much quicker so we're not storing multiple instances into memory we're just using the one uh, that we've already got there so this is all we're going to do in this tutorial uh, hopefully you can follow along and uh, bear with me with all my mistakes it's a little late but I really wanted to get this one done um, and I hope this makes sense to you I mean at this point we have a little Mario in a grass tile and uh, they don't really do much and even our grass tile right now is being rendered on top of him but that's just because our game state class we render him sec second or render the grass tile second we do this that will alleviate the weird fact that a grass piece of grass is over top of our guy our Mario character there we go alright so I will see you in the next tutorial where we start building the world and I'm gonna try to make that one a little bit more precise and crisp um, I just I guess having a lot of brain farts tonight so uh, the next one will be much better I will see you guys there